Okay. SFDC then is all about recording what happens on the shop floor and so who is working at which machine centres, the production orders that they're working on, how long they've spent on each job, um, the scrap that they've had to post, output that they've posted, um, and consumption that they've posted as well. So it's trying to have a, a dedicated um, portal um, which is in a, a big touch-friendly interface um, that you can use tablets in the warehouse rather than having to have a, a PC with nav installed in, in the corner of the, the factory. Um, okay, so we've got a, a production order loaded into the portal 10108 that we're ready to start on. Uh, we're expecting to make 16, of which we've made none so far. This is the same production order in NAV, and there are two main entries that we're going to be interested in NAV. The first is item ledger entries, which will display what's been output from that operation. Um, sorry, will display the finished quantity from this production order that's gone into stock um, and the items that have been consumed in order to, to make that production order and also the capacity ledger entries which will show the time that has been spent at each operation to work on that output so you, you have the so the twin elements of the cost of the production. One is the cost of the components that have gone into making it, the other is the cost of the running the machine yeah. that has gone into it. Uh, and as you can see, there's, there's no entries on either screen currently. Um, I, I will just show you the routing. These are the operations we are expecting to um, perform on this production order. And so we can attach an instruction to each of those steps. Um, yes, these operations are inherited from the setup of routing number uh, wherever it's gone, routing number one thousand, which is in turn associated with the item. Um, so the the instructions actually get set against the, the parent routing because these routing lines will routing lines will only exist as long as the production order exists. Right. Uh, so the instructions uh, are kind of a, a level above this. Um, so here we are operation 10 on machine center uh, 110 and the quantity available to start is 16 because it's the first operation in the list. And uh, you'll notice here SFDC complete is not ticked. That is the box that will be ticked when the operator stops the machine and says, I'm stopping because the production order is complete. Um, which may be because he's got to 16, he may actually output more than 16 if they've been able to make more than they're expecting to. Um, that's why the portal doesn't automatically stop when you reach the expected quantity because the reality might be we make a few more, we make a few less and um, the operator needs to, to tell the system uh, when it's complete. So it's flexible. Yeah. Uh, so now let's start the machine and post some output and let's post consumption of one of the items and stop the machine again and the reason is because we're going on break So now, against the item ledger entries, we're going to see an entry of consumption. 
which has consumed 16 of item number 1100 and that is linked to this production order 10188. Um, we won't see any output entries in here because this is the first operation of four. You, you'll only see output when the, the last operation outputs, then it is considered to go into stock at that point, and you'd see item letter entries here. So we'll see consumption, but not uh, output uh, in this example. What we will see, however, is capacity ledger entries to say uh, this operation, operation 10, which is machine center 110, uh, has output a quantity of 1. So it's, it's recorded that this operation has completed 1, even if that hasn't resulted in new stock. And this is uh, a post for the time. It's a runtime of 0.46667, and that is in the unit of measure of the machine center, which uh, I happen to know is minutes in this case. So the machine was running for almost half a minute in order to output one, um, a quantity of one. And uh, you restart the machine, uh, carry on after your break, and post some more output, maybe post some more consumption, and uh, let's say this time we stop for an unknown reason. Um, under investigation is marked in, in, in our example in NAV as being an unplanned stop. So it may be the machine has stopped, but we don't know why it stopped currently. Um, so the, the background turns to red, so it's very obvious from a distance this machine is, is down, it's unproductive at the moment. Um, we'll see those new entries in NAV. So there's some more consumption of a different item, 1200 this time and we've recorded some more output and time against this operation. Because we've stopped for an unplanned reason now, um, we've got a couple of options. We can either restart the machine, or it may be that we need to exit this production order altogether because the reason we've stopped means we, we can't continue with the, the remaining 13. Uh, in the case that we restart, then the operator is asked to confirm the reason they stopped. It may be that at the point at which you stop, you don't know why you stopped, so you need to spend some time investigating and um, select whatever the appropriate actual stop reason was. Um, now we're back to a running state again. Um, in NAV, so we've recorded the fact that for one and three quarter minutes the machine was stopped um, because that has become a, a factor in the cost of, of making this production order. If we stop again and again choose an unplanned reason, uh, now we've got an option to exit altogether and there's two things to confirm now. As before, confirm the reason that we're stopping. And secondly, there's a separate list, which is uh, new to SFDC. What are the reasons that you're choosing to exit uh, the production order, which, which may be different to the reason you decided to stop. Um, and th there's only one in this case. But, uh, so you need to confirm both of those, and then you're returned to what are we going to work on now instead? You could add more reasons to the exit if you want. Yes, you could add more reasons, yeah. And again, we'll have um, another entry just over one minute before the time that the machine was stopped in this case. So the, the two pages we were looking at before are standard now of the item ledger entries and the capacity ledger entries. 
this is SFDC's own log of what has happened. So a blank operator means the machine itself. Um, so the machine started at this time and uh, was running for 28 seconds. Uh, then there was a, a planned stop, which was a break, which lasted 109 seconds. Then it was restarted, then it was stopped because uh, it was under investigation. And then the actual reason that we stopped was there's a power cut. This is also where you start building up the cost of the operator themselves. Okay. Um, so the, the machine has a, a unit cost, and you'd say it, for every per unit of measure, so say a minute, it costs us 75p to run the machine for a minute or whatever. Um, you can do a similar thing with the operators and say this is their unit of measure and this is their cost, in which case um, that 28 seconds cost us 47p for this operator. The real product is actually that, that log um, because management want to know we're expecting to run the machine for 12 hours a day how much productive time are we actually getting out of it? Mm -hmm. And if it's not 12 hours, then what are the reasons we're not getting 12 hours out of it? Um, and he, he sees that as being the real value for the company as a whole. Power BI, uh, I think, is right. the envisaged reporting.